Unbelievable! Unbelievable! What a round six. This is the best fight that I've ever witnessed live. I've never seen a fight this dramatic live. I've seen them on TV. This is outrageous. Let's see how they finish it up. You can take your list of round of the year and put it in big marker right now. And he talked about how disappointed he was, that he didn't land a single blow that could have turned the first fight around. He actually questioned whether or not he would continue on in his career. And then he thought, I want to be at the top level again. But sometimes those tiny seeds of doubt, they can sprout when you get into spots like this. Yeah, I don't think those seeds that we're talking about are, are tiny. I think they're, they're major. And they're laying dormant in the mind of Murata. And Rob Brandt, the burden is on him to bring those seeds of doubt to the surface early in this fight to let Murata know the first fight was not a fluke. I'm the champion, I have one defense, and I'm here to defend my title again on your home turf. Having heard those comments here, as there's an early pace being set by Brandt that is similar to what we saw in the first fight, Tim, do you think that Murata should have gone straight back into this rematch or had a stay-busy comeback? I think that he should have had a stay-busy comeback fight and you know, to get prepared for Rob Brandt and what he's going to see. But coming straight back at Brandt, that just shows you a lot about his character and the fact that he wants to win his world championship back. It's a more aggressive Murata than we saw early on in yes. the first fight. Much more aggressive as he's closing the gap already. That's a big adjustment for him. He set on the outside in the first fight, and now he's inching closer and attacking quicker. But he's doing it behind punches now. And you see Rob Brand, he's just real offensive. He's gonna let his hands go. So the more Murata pressures, the more offense you're gonna see come from Rob Brand. It's a really good looking first round of a championship fight. Sometimes this is what you get in a rematch. They pick up right where they left off, and such is the case with Brand and a better looking Murata. Yeah, well rematches are all about adjustments, and we see Murata making the adjustment right now in this first round. He's not laying back, allowing the motor of Rob Brandt to get going. He jumped on Rob Brandt, and right now, Rob Brandt is processing and trying to figure out how Murata came out so fast. Yeah, absolutely. Rob Brandt is wondering what's going on. It's not the way it's supposed to be, but he's still determined. And going down to the body right there is Rob Brandt to slow down Murata. Listen, Brandt is still very much on the pace that he wants to keep. It's just an improved version of Murata that's against him. Murata is moving, has that high guard, and following him out and smothering Rob Brandt as often as possible. Good body work that time from Murata. Closes the gap again, a straight right hand to the body, right hand upstairs, and then a four punch combination from Brandt. Both men opening up, and Murata scores well. And there's a short left hand on the inside from Brand Murata Dix to the body. What an excellent, excellent first round of the rematch. Okay, watch your feet. Watch your feet. Watch your feet. Knockdowns through four rounds. Zapata's dropped Baranchik three times. Baranchik started it all off, dropping Zapata twice in the first round. But at the end of the day, there's another knockdown that could have counted for Zapata too, as now here comes Baranchik. Round five of a scheduled oh, ten round fight. Ooh, Baranchik oh gets flipped once again with the left. Look at that. Here comes the combinations and angles from Jose Zapata. People look at him as a boxer. He said, there's some dog in me. That's what I'm talking about. Well, he's showing it tonight, and he's fighting. You know, and this is the level, this is the level that I see that Cepeda's on now. He got that from the Ramirez fight. That's the experience that he gained. He said, I didn't do enough in the back end. I'm gonna stand my ground this time, and that's what he's doing in spots. We always ask fighters, because they'll say, oh, What's different? The experience. The experience. He quantified it. He said yeah. the fact that Ramirez showed that will down the stretch. He wanted it more. And that's what I got to do. That's who I have to be. And that's who he is right now, landing that left hook. But Baranchik continues to be extremely dangerous here in round number five. This is a gut check type of fight for Jose Zapata. 
We talked about him having all the tools to outbox you, but did he have enough to dig deep down and want to be that guy? Tonight, he's being that guy. He's being forced to be that guy by Baranchik. Yes, and that's is. not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. And this is the way you get fans. Many fans don't want to watch you. You got to stand your ground and fight. He's a superior boxer, but he also has punching power. And he's choosing the right spots right now. It's a pay to choosing the right spots and catching Baranchik and hurting him. Now, Baranchik has got incredible recovery stamina. powers and stamina because oh he's been down and none of them has been a cheap knockdown. No, no, right on the chin, get caught right on the buzzer and he gets up. Comes Baranchik, he's trying to get Zapata against the ropes. You know what he's trying to do? He's trying to wear him down. He's trying to get him to the halfway point. He wants Cepeda to doubt himself. If he can make it past there, and if his condition it can hold up, Cepeda could be in trouble down the stretch. Whoa! Oh, no, it's a big right hand from Baranchik. And it's a knockdown because the ropes held him up. Okay. All right, so five rounds. Oh my goodness. More than five knockout knockdowns. No knockout yet because these two guys have a heart. Oh! Big oh, down. He bends the leg, and this fight is done. What a knockout from Jose Cepeda. John with the big knockout here in the bubble at the MGM Grand. He's number one in the world in the WBC. What an impressive performance from John Cepeda. And Ivan Baranchik is still down. Finish. Listen, this is the best fight that I've ever witnessed live, honestly. Beautiful shot right there from Baranchik. Nice overhand right. He's always dangerous. When you're in the ring with a puncher, especially a determined one to land that big bum, it's always dangerous for a fighter. You know, and that was a knockdown right there for Baranchik. He was able to create it. Beautiful shot catching. You know, you see the little angle he was on when he landed that right hand. And the ropes held him up. That's why it was a knockdown. And I said, very, you know, show Vary that right hand. Vary the right hand. And he did that. He looped it right there on Cepeda. Cepeda never saw it coming. Cepeda stepped back, gave him some distance to land that right hand. And then after that came the end. And this is the end right here. Nice little check hook right there after the jab. And then the big boom right on the chin from Cepeda. Check hook. Boom. Okay. You see the head of Baranchik. He never saw it coming. But look at the leg right there behind him. But his body collapsed in midair. He was knocked out in midair. This is what's brutal about it. He's knocked out there. there. The right leg is completely discombobulated. And then he smacks his head on the canvas at full strength. This is the best fight that I've ever witnessed live. I've never seen a fight this dramatic live. I've seen them on TV. I had one in 2013. The fighter tonight, Cepeda, will get fighter of the year in 2020, in my opinion. No one's going to top that. We are headed into round six, approaching the halfway point of a fight that has turned into very much a chess match. They exchange left hooks. Will it heat up? There were some intense moments. Oh, big left hook sends Corte down. Oscar De La Hoya lands the left hook and sends Corte down. I don't know if Corte is hurt as much as off balance. Let's see. Earlier when they exchanged left hooks, De La Hoya got the worst of it. This time it was Corte who opened himself up. Big right by Corte. Right and left by De La Hoya, but Corte comes back with his own. They rumble in the corner. It's not a chess match anymore. Mitch Halpern 
Jones took a lot of time to warn Ike Corte about something. What? I don't know. And I have to say that warning gave Oscar De La Hoya a little time to recoup. De La Hoya opening himself up again. Nice jab by Corte. It has heated up here in round six. De La Hoya landed that left, took the set. Oh my, nice right hand by Corte. De La Hoya got very brave after he landed that left hook to Corte, but he opened himself up for the next left hook. Now De La Hoya comes back with his jabs. Under a minute left to go. Both men have been down here in the sixth. Swelling around the left eye of De La Hoya. It's Corte pressing forward. Those punches were all blocked by De La Hoya, or by Corte. Well, who do you like in this round? Both men were knocked down, but Corte seemed to land the bigger punches and seemed to land more of them. Jab keeps going. Here's where De La Hoya was sent by Corte down as they exchanged left hooks. De La Hoya off, or Corte off balance, got hit with the left hook, but turn around is fair play. There was a left hook by Corte, sending De La Hoya down right on the chin. His favorite fighter, Wilfredo Gomez. All right, here we go. Both guys are decked out in white and pink, so the guy with the pink on his shoes is Juan Man Lopez. With what looks more primarily pink to you, but he's got some silver on the trunks, is Bernabe Concepcion. So to the right of your screen is Lopez Concepcion with his back to you now. The taller of the two men is Lopez. The Colonel Bob Sheridan here with the champ Juan Laporte. Glad that you can be with us here at the Coliseo Jose Miguel Agrelo in Ato Rey in Puerto Rico. This is the first of the 12 round scheduled WBO featherweight championship at 126 pounds. Neither guy has opened up just yet. Oh! Right away, Concepcion is touched up. Concepcion is squared up. And Lopez has shown his power right away. He did. He shows his power, but you see right after that, he goes right to the head. Again, he should be working to the body so he could get the guy in the head. That's coming from one of the great body punches of all time, don't forget. And right to the body goes Concepcion, but right through it okay. comes Lopez, and he's down. He caught him with a shot, and Concepcion's down in the first round. And you know something? He's hurt. He is. He got him with hit a good the shot. Head. Hit him right in the head. The count's up to eight. He's okay. So Lopez's power is significant right away. Concepcion wants to fight as hard as he can. Loading up the shots is one man. Lopez caught him in the chin again. This doesn't look like it's going to take long. Boy, one man. Well, Lopez looks huge against Concepcion. Concepcion got to grab on. He pushes down. And referee oh, Luis Pavon right on top of him. Loads up the right hand. Whistles past the chin of Lopez. Lopez took a shot, but he right now in the stage will take one to get it in. You see the head go down to Concepcion, and Juan Manuel comes right with the uppercut. He wants to finish this off in the first round. Oh, he is. If he gets another shot like that, it, it, this fight will be at the, the end in the first round. But uh, Kid is getting his composure back together, and Man Juan Manuel Lopez is just taking his time. He, he feels that he can hurt him anytime he wants. Uh, he knows he's got the power, catches him with a left hand again. Don't forget for the southpaw, that's the power shot. He's all <laughs> over him. Concepcion better do something. He could give Pepon the reason to no step in. No body shot. There you go, a body shot. He oh, look at that. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. Bon well no well body gets shot. knocked oh. down with no Thank body you. shots. Concepcion Thank shows his own power Thank and drops Thank Juan Manuel Lopez. So after all that, Concepcion wins the first round. Well, 
You can't get too overconfident, right? Wow! How about that? Let's see, as Concepcion gets hit with a left hook, Wanma comes in, again, no body shots. They're just throwing wild shots here now. And you know, just accumulation of punch. That wasn't even a clear knockdown. It was a punch before. Let's see this now. Throwing all kinds of shots, ducks underneath, no. and he catches him with a left hook. No body shots. Remember, so much is on the line here at 140 pounds. Saucedo has been destined for greatness for so long. The hype has been building. A win tonight, and possibly lined up to fight undefeated Maurice Hooker, who just won the belt from Terry Flanagan. Both of these guys made their reputations within the boxing business at the wild card. Years ago, Lady Z came from Australia. Freddie Roach put him in with Miguel Cotto. And he impressed. Oh, savage shot. Saucedo attacking that head left and right as Lenny Z comes back. Look at the experience now coming in. You want to talk about experience and guts from hurt and battered to now a left hook that has the undefeated hometown kid hurting badly. He better and hold. Up. He better hold. Lenny Z going Look at for this it. action from Lenny Z. Going for broke here in round number four. A big right hand. Alex Saucedo stood up to it somehow. Finally ties up for a moment, but quickly a break. Can you believe this fight? And a cut on Saucedo's right eye as he takes and takes and tries to get more. I asked Lenny Z yesterday, what happens if he loses? There is no losing, he said. Absolutely not. He Pierce. knows this is his last shot. This is basically the Maurice Hooker's title. This is his last shot to get there, to get that Squared title. up, throwing punch after punch after punch. He's going for it. Blood streaming down the face of Saucedo as well as he lands an uppercut. We, we've talked about Lenny Z's cuts. Salcedo is cut in his last two fights, and this is a gruesome one above his right eye. There you go. Salcedo loves to fight that mid-distance range. You don't like to use his height. Guess what? Lenny Z knows that, and he stays there after every combination, doesn't move his head, and Lenny Z, an aggressive counterpuncher. Salcedo landed a right hand opened up the cut even worse on Lenny Z, and Lenny Z stands up and just fires back. This is outrageous. Let's see how they finish it up. Let them take it home, boys. You can take your list of round of the year and put it in big marker right now. Here's how it all started. And you see Salcedo jabbing right there, a little bit too close, tried to throw a hook from the middle and got clipped with the right hand. There it is, overhand right. Jabbing or throwing a punch from the middle, whether it's a hook or a jab. Lenny Z stepping right in with the overhand right. He changed levels right there. Look at how clean their faces were at wow. that moment of the fourth round. Now Manny beats Marco Antonio Barrera. Didn't and even win a title. And didn't he win a title. Who everybody recognized as the world featherweight champion. Left-hander comes out. He's wearing the flaming trunks. Marquez a more subtle white color with the red trim. Scheduled for 12 rounds. And I think it's going to be like this. <laughs> Well, that's why Pacquiao has the flames on his trucks, because he comes out blazing. Every fight he fights is the same. He's got a lot of energy. He's going to be real busy moving in and out. He's not a runner. No. He has a lot of movement. Well, what do you think the keys to this fight are, Lester? Well, I think for Marquez, he's got to establish that jab early. The way Marco Antonio Barrera beat, beat uh, Nassim Good Nassim combination. Ahmed, 
The way he beat Nassim Ahmed is establishing that jab. And against the left-hander, if you can establish that jab against him, it'll help him a lot. And you keep Pacquiao off of him, and he'll be able to land those combinations and those counter punches. What's a Pac-Man got to do? Not a Pac-Man's got to do what he always does. He's got to <laughs> rush. He's got to rush in. He's, he's got to be careful not to get too reckless, though, because he can get hurt by Marquez. He's a big puncher. And he's got to use his speed advantage. He's got to be careful not to stay inside too long. And, uh, but he's got to be careful when he throws that left hand, which is a very powerful left hand, not to overcommit. Another good combination from Juan Manuel Marquez. 30-year-old fighter who waited a long time to win those titles. Finally got one against Manuel Medina right here in Las Vegas, February 1st of last year. Then backed it up with a victory over Derek Smoke Gaynor. Heck out! There's that left hand. Comes in with a left hand and puts Marquez on the seat of his pants. Just that fast. Marquez has been down before against some pretty good fighters. Fred Norwin knocking down. Daryl Pickney, a good German fighter, knocking down. But he appears to be all right right here. Well, this is the thing. Down goes Marquez again with another left. But this is the first time he's been down twice in a round. And there's a long way to go. Now he's confident he's got to be think, shot. Yeah, he's got to be in a little bit of trouble here. He gets knocked down again. The referee might end the fight. We didn't even get started, and Pacquiao was all over him. That could be it. That one hurt him. Only 30 seconds left in the round. I don't think he's going to make it through the round. He gets hit with another left hand. That's going to be it. But Pacquiao's got to be careful. Marcus can hurt you, too. I don't know if the referee let it go if he gets knocked down for a fourth time. 15 seconds left in the round. Pacquiao just comes in and just unloads. I mean, this is no funny business whatsoever. Marquez has been down three times in the first round. Oh, Pacquiao. That's it. Marquez still standing. Pacquiao staring at him from across the ring, not going to his corner immediately. He couldn't believe it. He couldn't believe he was still standing. You'll see the power of Pacquiao coming here. He has a huge left hand, and that's where everybody gets into trouble with Pacquiao. That is his bread and butter, that left hand. He's got to be careful in this fight, though. If he lays in there with that left hand, he gets, he, he gets too careless. He could very well be countered by Marquez, who's a big puncher himself. Use your fence, use your fence. 